G'day, welcome to the VK8 FOS YouTube channel. The date is Thursday the 4th of April 2024 and today I will be demonstrating some interesting features of the BlackBerry Bold 9700 GSM mobile phone. This of course is the mobile phone I used to help me intercept my own phone call on a real GSM network in this video here. Go and check that out if you haven't already, it's pretty cool. So why am I making a video about an obsolete 2G mobile phone from the early 2010s anyway? That is a good question and the answer to that is simply because it makes a great addition to your GSM security research toolkit. A common thing for mobile phone manufacturers to do back in the days of second generation cellular was to implement a type of hidden menu accessible by pressing a key combination on the mobile phone itself. These hidden menus are commonly referred to as engineering screens. And these menus display exactly what their name describes, engineering data. More specifically, they may show various pieces of information relating to the cellular functions of a mobile phone. And the cellular engineering screens are exactly the reason why BlackBerry Bold 9700 is a highly desirable tool for working with GSM data. So I purchased this pre-owned BlackBerry 9700 last year from eBay, shipped from the United Kingdom. From memory, it was advertised as unlocked, but when I attempted to use a SIM card in it, it appeared to it appeared as though it was indeed locked to the O2 network in the UK. After a few days of tinkering, I managed to actually unlock this BlackBerry 9700 free of charge to allow to accept SIM cards from other cellular providers. It was quite some time ago since I performed the unlocking on this thing, and I can't remember which resources I utilized, the method in which I performed the unlocking or the software tools I used to do it. If your BlackBerry 9700 is locked, I won't be able to help you unlock it, unfortunately. Sorry about that. So my BlackBerry is rather old. Uh, and as such, it has a few annoying defects. The first one that is immediately observable is this defect in the upper left-hand corner of the display. I took this phone traveling extensively and it appears to have sustained an impact to the LCD display during this time. The second defect, which will probably affect the making of this video, is that the keyboard exhibits some weird behavior that makes inputting text rather difficult. As we need to input keystrokes in order to unlock the engineering screen. It could take multiple attempts to do this. So please be patient while I troubleshoot this. One final thing that needs to be mentioned before we get started is that these BlackBerry phones will need a SIM card with a valid subscription inserted into it. This is because the BlackBerry will need to interact with the base transceiver station in order to retrieve useful information from it. The best way to follow this SIM card is to just eject the SIM card, ah, oh, sorry, the Best way to follow this tutorial is to just eject the SIM card out of your smartphone and insert it into your BlackBerry. So with all that being said, let's proceed to the tutorial segment of the video now, and I'll show you how to gain access to the engineering screen. So as we can see here, I have my BlackBerry 9700 powered on and sitting on my PC desk. I have the charging cable disconnected currently, but if you want or need to plug in the charging cable, that is acceptable too. So before we get started, i oh, sorry, sorry, to get started with the engineering screen, all we need to do is send it the, a simple key combination via the keypad. So we need to send it Alt, Left, Shift, and H all together at the same time. And please check this diagram if you're unsure of which buttons are which. So I'll proceed to go ahead and do that. I've got fat fingers, so it's not easy to do. And we agreed with something that isn't the engineering screen. But don't worry, I was anticipating this. Help me menu appearing. And we will utilize some information displayed on it to ultimately unlock the highly desirable engineering screen. 
So we're going to have to require the use of an online tool to help us generate the key, which will ultimately unlock the engineering screen. So we'll need to open our web browser and utilize a, the Internet Wayback Machine to browse to this particular web page. I'll put a link in the description below. So this website that oozes mega late 2000s internet vibe requires some data from our Blackberry's Help Me screen to be inputted in order to generate the engineering screen unlock code that we will ultimately enter via the keypad. So on the third line of the engineering screen, oh, sorry, the help me screen, you will see a field that says pin. In my case, you will see it is an eight digit string of lowercase letters and numbers. I'll go ahead and transcribe this value into the device pin field of the web page. On the second line of the help me screen, you'll see a field named app version. This one is a bit tricky, but we will need to transcribe this string of numbers, including the decimal points, spaces, and the brackets. I'll proceed to enter this value into the app version field of the web page. So I'll copy and paste because it always remains the same. Next, we will need to scroll down on our BlackBerry So we need to scroll down to the line on the BlackBerry's Help Me screen and locate the line that says Uptime. We will need to transcribe the numbers of this value into the Uptime field of this web page. But this time we ignore the text that says seconds and enter the numbers only. Please be aware that if you close the help me screen and then reopen it again, the value will, the uptime value will change. As you can see, mine has changed to 95,248 seconds. So I'll go ahead and update the value in the uptime field of the web page. Nine five two four eight. Next on the web page, we need to select how long we want the engineering screen to be unlocked for. Unfortunately, it is not possible to permanently unlock it, but we can select a number of durations up to 30 days. My viewers should definitely choose 30 days, but I'm gonna select one day because I may need to re-record re this video for whatever reason. Also, the amount of time the engineering screen stays unlocked for seems to be barely arbitrary. When I performed a test run of this procedure prior to recording this video, I selected one day and the engineering screen stayed unlocked for about three days. So yeah, if you choose 30 days, it could be longer or shorter than that. So finally, with all the fields filled out correctly on the web page, um, it should be displaying our generated unlock code. Please do not exit the help me screen just yet, or you will have to begin this tutorial from the first step. So what we will do now is we enter this code directly onto the BlackBerry via its keyboard. The code is not case sensitive, so please enter only lowercase letters. Numbers will have to be inputted by holding the Alt key and pressing the desired number key on the left hand side of the keyboard. My keyboard, as I said before, was slightly defective and entering the unlock code is difficult. So please bear with me. So I'll proceed to do that now. My unlock key is 04563D5F. Please be aware that yours will be different from this most probably. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so that took two attempts. I actually made a mistake, but I'll be sure to correct that in post-production. I'll put a, and a disclaimer here saying I just actually pressed the wrong button to select numbers. So I'll fix that for you, but thanks for bearing with me. But we have finally unlocked our BlackBerry's engineering screen. Very, very nice indeed. So what exactly can you do with a BlackBerry engineering screen anyway? This is a good question, and I will demonstrate three of the most useful features that I think will be most desirable to my viewers. So the first cool feature that the BlackBerry 9700 has that I wanna show you is the ability to retrieve the last known KC value that the GSM base station provided to your 2G mobile phone. Most people should know that the KC value is the encryption key this feature, uh, so they should know that it is the encryption key and this feature is useful if you wanna play around with decrypting your own GSM traffic for the purposes of education and experimentation. I wanna keep this very clear that this BlackBerry will only show you the KC value that the base station has provided to it to secure 2G data destined for this phone and nobody else's. So I'll just browse to the mobile network engineering screens menu. We scroll down to, where is it? Sim, uh, sorry, is it utilities? No. Sim browser, sorry. Couldn't find it there for a while. And you can see on the fourth line, we can see sim underscore EF underscore Casey click and we this, this is the optical touchpad I believe they call it and this is also the enter button so we just press that and we can see it says file not found if it's saying file not found that means that there is no encryption in use on this base station but more probably you may have to initialize a phone call or send an SMS so an encryption key is provided to your BlackBerry by the 2G base station. If you do not have a string of 16 numbers and letters, this is the 64-bit. Uh, if you do have a string of 16 numbers and letters, this is the 64-bit encryption key used to secure the data being downlinked to this BlackBerry. You can use this KC value to decrypt your own GSM traffic with GRGSM and a software-defined radio. So the second cool feature of the BlackBerry 9700 is the ability to lock to a specific GSM cell. 2G mobile phones are constantly scanning for a base station with a stronger signal to hand over to. You could be walking down a crowded city street or moving quickly in a bus or train and the mobile phone needs to quickly hand over to the next cell site that you are entering the coverage area of. This is an automated process that happens quickly unbeknownst to the user of the mobile phone. If your GSM lab environment exists in an overlap of the cover coverage areas of multiple 2G base stations, your mobile phone might constantly jump between two or more cells. This makes it hard to intercept your own GSM data with software-defined radio for education and experimentation. So I'll show you exactly how you can lock your BlackBerry 9700 to a single base station and prevent it handing over to another cell. So once again, we'll enter the mobile network engineering screens. We scroll down to the fifth line, which says neighbor cells. Click on that. Um, and we can see my base, my test cell is listed here. So highlight the desired cell that you want to lock to. This thing here is called the menu key with the dots on it, the BlackBerry logo. So you press that. Scroll down to lock to this cell and press the enter key. And if you want to undo the cell lock, you just basically repeat the same thing. You press the menu key and press undo cell lock. But since I only have one GSM cell operating in my lab environment, I don't need to lock to any cells.
The third and final cool feature of the BlackBerry 9700 is the ability to select which voice codec to use. This feature is significant because a lot of modern GSM networks use the AMR codec on full rate traffic channels. AMR stands for Adaptive Multi-Rate, by the way. This can be problematic because GSM, uh, GRGSM underscore decode has the huge limitation of not being able to decode AMR full rate voice channels. So a nice and safe option for a voice codec that GRG, GRGSM underscore decode understands is just the regular old GSM full rate codec or FR for short. GRGSM decode can understand AMR half rate but this is a little more difficult to work with. So I'll just keep it nice and simple and show you how to configure the regular GSM full rate codec in your BlackBerry 9700. So for the third time, we'll enter the mobile network engineering screen, scroll down to voice channel, highlight, ah, uh, sorry, we scroll down to voice stats. Ah, uh, sorry, we don't have to scroll down. It's the first option. And we need to highlight the button at the top right that says default and press the trackpad button. Scroll down and highlight FR, which stands for full rate and press the trackpad button once again. I was calling it the enter button before, the proper term is trackpad button. And then we press the, finally we press the menu key, the BlackBerry logo button and Press the trackpad button to confirm the choice. And now we can see in the menu now that we have our preferred codec as a full rate FR GSM voice channel. So yeah, that's pretty cool. These three features are probably the most desirable for my audience. There's a couple of other cool features that I'll just demonstrate quickly before we wrap up the video. So it's possible to use the BlackBerry's engineering screen to establish if the GSM base station you were targeting is using frequency hopping channels. Most of my viewers should already know that decoding frequency hopping GSM base stations is extremely difficult. I personally couldn't achieve it, so in my opinion, it's best to avoid them completely and work with non-hopping 2G base stations instead. So I'll once again for the fourth time enter the mobile network engineering screens we scroll down to cell information and then we scroll down to the line that says ARFCNs. And as we can see here, I have a single ARFCN value of 975 displayed on this line here. If you have multiple AIFCN values showing in this field here, the base station is using frequency hopping channels. And yeah, as I alluded to previously, working with frequency hopping base stations is very challenging, so it's best just to avoid them entirely, in my opinion. On to the next thing now. Sometimes it is difficult to find your own GSM traffic on a crowded and busy 2G base station. But if the TMSI value, or people call it TIMSI, which is your temporary mobile subscriber identification value, if you know that value from your own mobile phone, you can use it to target your own GSM data being downlinked by the base station when using software defined radio and GRGSM. So again, we'll enter the mobile network engineering screens we scroll down to mobile identity and we can see our TIMSI value displayed on the third line. So normally TIMSIs are a value that is eight numbers and letters preceded by a zero and the letter X. In the year of 2024, GSM just isn't that popular anymore as the world has moved on to the subsequent cellular generations. Australia's even, we've started our 3G switch off already. There's only one cellular provider still, op, uh, still providing 3G. So the time for 3G is coming to an end as well here in the world. 
So yeah, it shouldn't be too difficult to target your own data on a 2G base station anyway in 2024. So yeah, of course, this isn't an exhaustive list of all the useful features of the BlackBerry engineering screen. There could probably be plenty more cool things to do while diving deep into these hidden menus. A lot of the configurable options seem very technical and seem like they could break a lot of things on your BlackBerry if adjusted incorrectly. So please proceed with caution when playing around with this kind of stuff. Another thing I'll add quickly is that I'm not sure if all BlackBerry phones have an engineering screen as helpful as the BlackBerry Bold 9700. So my recommendation is to try and find this exact model. However, I cannot guarantee that that the BlackBerry 9700 that you personally acquire will work with this tutorial. So please purchase one at your own risk. So yeah, that'll wrap up this video for today. I hope you found this tutorial and demonstration helpful and informative. Sorry about the delay in releasing videos recently. I've got heaps of videos in the pipeline, which I intend to record and upload over the coming weeks and months. So thanks very much for watching. Bye.